Since it's spooky season, Uh, I really shouldn't include time-sensitive bits in my scripts. I thought I'd talk about the spookiest form of gaming. Oh, oh my God. Horror? No. Mobile. <laughs> I've been mad lately, and it all started with me remembering an ad I saw in some comic book I was reading as a kid. It showed a fellow kid that was better than me. He had a handheld console, not sure which one, might have been this, this, or this, and he was playing it in his bed under a blanket with his smug little happy face. Probably had rich and loving parents too. That ad did exactly what it was designed to do. Got my little mind racing and my imagination going wild. You're telling me I don't even have to get out of my bed to play games? <sighs> Sign me up, brother. I'm like seven. I don't yet realize the consequences of a stationary lifestyle. Back then, mobile gaming technically existed, but you never even considered the possibility of it ever reaching console level gameplay and graphics because phones were just what even were phones? Like one was a small plastic brick with literal disco lights attached to the side and the other was a sports car. Nobody had figured out the formula for a phone back then and of course that means everyone was just being creative, experimenting and throwing shit at the wall to see what sticks. This is the phase where everything is always so fun. I've talked about the exact same thing in regards to the gaming industry. As soon as someone strikes gold, everyone starts to copy them and everything becomes homogenous and boring, which is where we're at right now with AAA gaming in my opinion. Anyways, that little tangent aside, the best you got in terms of mobile gaming back then was a red ball. Ball bounce? Game name bounce. That shit slapped by the way. Actually, in many ways, if not every way imaginable, I'd consider mobile gaming back in the early 2000s to have been better than it is now, relatively speaking, which sounds like it should be a controversial statement, but come on, that bar is set so low, it's fucking melting in Earth's core right now. I don't remember the names of all the exact games that I played, and I wish I did, but I remember a few, like Prince of Persia and Splinter Cell, and boy, those were straight flames. And they were so good because games were so still being designed as traditional games. They hadn't yet figured out all the bullshit we'll get into later. Ah, <sighs> we were living in the good old times without even knowing it. So fast forward to today and I'm all grown up and cool. I have a phone that's powerful enough to run 10 Game Boy Advance games at the same time and I don't really care at all. Why? What do you mean, why? I'm not a fucking toddler who fantasizes about living in pillow forts anymore. But I still have that same love for gaming. I'm still excited at the idea that I could use this thing I carry in my pocket at all times to play games and not have to power up a 30 pound heap of metal and plastic and fucking cables every time. It's just that I'm conditioned to dry heave at the sheer mention of the words mobile game. And that's nobody's fault but their own. Mobile games are like the bastard child of gaming. Everyone hates them and they suck. But where do things go wrong? Money! As is the case with everything else that ever goes wrong, money. Somebody was just really testing the limits to how far you can go with predatory monetization and discovered that you can get away with pretty much anything on this godforsaken platform. If you're chronically online like me, I'm sure you remember the infamous Let's Go Whaling video from 2016. It's a presentation from some mobile games conference teaching us valuable life lessons like how to get whales to compete with each other. The very best way to get these guys to spend is to get two rich competitive guys to fight each other and tell them I'll give you a slight upside if you pay me. How to build an in-game economy that allows for unlimited spend and how to get people hooked to buying your quote unquote shit product. It's shit. So basically a presentation on how to scam people. It's complete unethical garbage, but I think it's actually a very valuable video. You can learn a lot about how your Yes, your psychology is being manipulated. You're not immune to this shit just because you were a gifted kid that didn't have to study in school and never developed a working ethic and are now paying the price as an adult. Nobody's trying to force you to fit into the molds that these statistics predict. You are the statistics. 
They're born from us, not the other way around. Well, I'm more than just numbers. Okay, Mackenzie, if you're not a stat, how do I know you have a dream catcher, that hippie tarp, and dusty LEDs on your walls? These companies have tons of data on us, and data is the most valuable currency. Knowing how they use that data to exploit you is very useful. You might not have even given any thought to how and why these systems exist in a game you're addicted to, so just being aware of that already makes you less susceptible to falling for it. But if these games are so successful, this has to be what people want. Consumers speak with their wallets, right? No. Every word you speak goes through your conscious filter. You put at least some thought into the ideas you're expressing. Mobile games are tailor-made to exploit your subconscious. When you speak with your wallet, you're not really speaking. You're impulsively reacting to purposeful, calculated manipulation you were just put through. If you laid all this shit out how it actually was in front of people who fall for it, I doubt anyone would speak in favor of it. When you say it out loud, I support this game limiting my progress artificially triggering every reward response in my brain to get me addicted, and literally making it possible to skip all the gameplay by paying, all with the sole purpose of quite literally robbing me of my hard-earned cash. You sound like a little poopoo dum dum, I'm sorry to say, you do. These games are built with this as a foundation. They start from the idea of being a bottomless pit for you to throw money in, and then add bare bones content to disguise it as anything but a literal slot machine. Who the fuck puts ads in games? How is this somehow accepted just because the screen is smaller and you're probably playing it while pooping? This is the difference between the mobile game and the PC slash console audiences. When that doofenshmirtz looking ass from EA does something stupid, people riot. Most mobile gamers are casual, they don't spend their time following the industry and discussing this stuff. They just take it as it's given to them. Don't think for a second shit wouldn't have evolved in the exact same way on PC or consoles had the players not gone ballistic over it every time it was attempted. Can you imagine your console or PC game, even a free one, pausing for 30 seconds to show you garbage ads for other games every time you die? And the topic of mobile game ads is a whole other rabbit hole. I'm sure you've seen plenty of this shit because, as you can imagine, these fuckers have money to burn. The industry is worth more than PC and console gaming combined, and most of these games are copy-pasted garbage with barely any production costs compared to other forms of gaming, so they're basically just printing money. And all of it is dumped into these bizarre, uncomfortable ads. Like, at least Raid knows its target audience, you know what I'm saying, sponsor me. But what is this Elsagate looking shit? Hero Wars is one of the many examples of this type of ad that shows stuff that's not even remotely a part of the game. Like you gotta dislodge these barriers or connect the pipes and the person doing it always fucks up in the most obvious ways to make you go like, no, you're doing it wrong. Only very often some weird shit happens. Either someone dies a brutal death, gets mauled by a buzzsaw, dissolved by acid, or gets shot in the face with an arrow. <laughs> Or there's, uh, this stuff that would probably get me demonetized to describe, and lots of other nasty and sexual stuff. Not only are these ads completely misleading, but the art style is so odd. All of this sketchy stuff is presented in an overtly cartoonish style with cartoonish sound effects and music, and that's what makes it so fucking bizarre. Mm. Mm. With Hero Wars specifically, they're owned by a company based in Cyprus and have a few different pages running their ads for some reason. The main one actually runs normal, good looking art, but Hero Wars Mobile and Hero Wars Web are where the cursed shit is at. I don't know why this is, but I know whichever of these games you look up, it's gonna give you some icky, shady vibes. Just go to their Facebook page, scroll down, and you can take a look at who owns it as well as all the ads they're currently running. Anyways, if you thought these ads give mobile games a bad name, Wait until you see the mobile games. The app store is dominated by hyper casual games and clones of other games that are pumped out at lightning speeds. Didn't Squid Game come out like two and a half months ago? I swear these precognizant motherfuckers had 10,000 Squid Games ready to go the second the show dropped. And this is where a lot of what's wrong with this industry stems from. The fact that the standards are set so low that these games can be churned out with barely any work.
When it comes to these hyper casual games, their margins are actually fairly low and they have the lifespan of your brain cells while playing them, which is why the tactic here is quantity over quality. Are you an indie dev with little to no marketing budget? Unless your game somehow becomes a viral hit organically, which is basically like winning the lottery, good luck pushing through the top charts with all the big boy publishers in your way. What if you are willing to sell your soul to these dark overlords to see your idol clash of tycoon legends royale saga blitz dash masterpiece blossom and be appreciated by the masses even that doesn't guarantee it they take on hundreds of games with the promise of marketing them for a widow tiny 50 percent cut of the profits but only actually push some. You might end up giving up your rights to the game entirely and be left with no leverage if it takes off. What if you don't agree to their egregious conditions? No problem! Our in-house team can whip up the exact same game you pitched in two days and pump more money into marketing it than you ever could. This is actually not as common as people think because statistically most games don't perform so they don't have reason to steal everything. But if something is already picking up some steam and showing potential, it absolutely absolutely will be cloned to infinity. Now, not all publishers are like this. I'm sure there's plenty of good ones, but there's also plenty of bad ones and the whole space is kind of tainted by their scummy actions. The thing that's so frustrating is that even with all of this, there's still good games on mobile. But all of the predatory tactics, bad practices, and lazy free-to-play games gave mobile gaming this unshakable aura of bad. And I feel like that's a huge missed opportunity. The instinctive reaction to a long-awaited title like Diablo coming to mobile is disappointment. But imagine if this whole branch of gaming had evolved in any but the one worst possible way. Authentic Diablo gameplay at your fingertips. Hey, uh, just was wondering, is this uh, an out of season? Christmas present from Daddy Blizzard to all of us very excited fans. Phones nowadays really are stupid powerful and we all own them. Is that not insane? Okay, maybe they're not directly comparable to something like the Switch or PSP. Phones are all different, so it's much harder to optimize games. They also need to do a lot of other stuff that takes up resources and they're not necessarily designed primarily for games. So as soon as they get hot, the performance is throttled so you can't really get the most out of the hardware. But if this branch of gaming was thriving, not in a financial but creative way like PC gaming was 20 years ago, imagine all the ways in which phones themselves could have evolved. Even in this absolute dog shit environment that is mobile gaming, we still have stuff like the ASUS ROG 5 or Lenovo Legion Dual 2 phone. These are mind blowing gaming phones and they basically have it all figured out already. They have way better cooling, insane specs, gigantic storage and great battery life. We know touchscreen controls are the worst, so slap some controller attachments on there. You want to dye your hair blue and start streaming? Sure, here's an amazing front camera that just pops up on your command. And these phones cost about the same as any other flagship phone. Also, the Switch has much worse graphics and resolution than other consoles because it's portable and that's a trade-off that everyone's fine with. So mobile gaming wouldn't necessarily have to be PC gaming but smaller. It could be its own little ecosystem with stylized games that are less demanding. But in order for any of this to happen, we would need a curated marketplace that would ditch the free-to-play bullshit and copy-pasted garbage, and we as consumers would have to get used to paying full price for full-fledged games. Is this ever gonna happen? No. There's simply too much money being made with pay to win, pay to skip, pay to receive absolutely nothing in return. I'm sure there's stuff buried somewhere somewhere deep in the darkest pits of the cesspool that is the app store that I would really enjoy. But man, do I not feel like digging around to find it. I've come to terms with the fact that I'll never cover myself with a blanket and excitedly dive into some new crazy world on my tiny screen. Most of that excitement comes from within and being an adult and not having a cynical attitude towards literally everything in life is kind of impossible. Hello everyone, this is me from the future editing this and I have a very very cool and relevant piece of information to add to this video. So for the edit of this video, I had to download uh, more garbage mobile games than I've ever downloaded in my life combined. And I would usually just open them up, play a few minutes, 
close them and de- delete them immediately uh, because I do not want that shit polluting my home screen. But you may remember seeing a glimpse of this one game that I used for just a few seconds in the video. Yes, I am still playing that shit. Yes, it is still installed on my phone. I open it every day in the morning, in the evening. I do all the stupid side quests things, if you can even call them quests, because the game just plays itself. You don't even play it. And this is what it looks like now compared to what it looked like um, when I used it in the video, which was like five or six days ago. The ironic thing being, it is probably the worst example of everything I talked about in this video. Like it has, I've never seen a game have more in-game stores than this one and more bullshit currencies. So pretty much every button they allow you to press leads you towards buying something. Like it is insane, but I guess even me, the woke gaming YouTuber, even I can't resist some thick, juicy anime thighs, come on. Like, you've heard of hypersexualized games? <laughs> nah, fam. This takes it one step above. This is like gigasexualized. I'm pretty sure this is as far as you can go without getting taken off the app store. So yes, when I say you're not immune to this shit, I mean it. I really fucking mean it. I wrote the script before I even downloaded the game. I downloaded it, it had everything that I talked about in the script and more. Mm, but wiggly, bouncy anime, mommy milkers, oh, boy, 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 boy. Before I decided to make this video, I started writing one about a game called Guns, which is probably the highest skill ceiling game of all time. I thought the story behind it was hella fascinated, but the more I delved into the game, the more I realized it's not really a type of game I wanna cover on the channel. So I'll just go over that story on my Patreon in the next few days, so go and check that out if you're interested. Thank you so much for watching and commenting on my stuff. Lately, it has become kind of hard to keep up with all the comments, but I do love reading them. Leave a like if you liked the video. I needed to complain about mobile games, and I'm glad you were here to listen to me all the way through.